What is up, beautiful people? Corwin L. Gilliams here from CLG Lifestyle. Hope you guys are feeling blessed and grateful to be alive because guess what? Some people did not wake up this morning, but we did. And that's enough of a reason for us to find the smallest opportunity to be grateful. If you've not already subscribed to my channel, please do so right now so you can stay connected to all that I'm doing, all that I'm creating. I also, I also have an ebook that's available for download. It is called I King Amongst Kings, a King David Descendant. Affirmations for the King who is becoming with spiritual insights. This book is going to remind you or have you rediscover or become uh, or know who and what God has called you to be foundationally. We are children of God. We are sons of God. And foundationally, there is a component of our, our identity that we need to be solidified in. And then from there, we, we manifest the peculiar nature or the unique attributes about us that God has made for us to make us distinct. Yet still, in the body of Christ, we are collaborative and harmonious and doing the will of God according to his design, according to his leadership. However, um, we need to know who we are foundationally and begin to operate in, in that, okay? So the, the link is in the description box of this video. You can, there's two options. You can have it for free or you can pay $4.99 as a way to support my platform or more what it is that I'm doing. Also, I have a podcast called the Corwin L. Gilliams Podcast. You can also check out the link in the description box. And you'll, you'll also see information about more of who I am and how I came about to do this and, and what CLG Lifestyle is about, right? So this morning is when I'm recording this video. Um, I'm recording it in the morning. And so um, I just did my uh, my first ride for the day. Um, I do lift currently. Um, this is what I'm doing right now. Um, it provides me the opportunity, of course, to have to maintain, have a car and sustain a car, but at the same time to, you know, have more freedom when it comes to um, being able to create and to create content like this. Um, I also have been studying my, the word in here. It's like my little office away from my current living situation, which I feel so grateful to have and, and to experience. And I thank God for that. But um, I wanted to talk to you about, so those of you who don't know, I am Corwin L. Gilliams, creator of CLG Lifestyle, influencing you to love self. Foundationally, CLG Lifestyle, or what I do is lifestyle influencing, and I focus on areas that revolves around relationship with self, relationship with God, uh, fitness, food, fashion, uh, and just truth and, and, and righteousness as I feel compelled in my heart to share, I share. So today, uh, I just wanted to encourage, you know, I had to, you know, I, I don't limit myself on what it is I share or should I say the inspiration for my sharing. I know it's important for us to receive revelation from the word of God and most importantly, be directed by the Holy Spirit to do whatever it is that we do, because that's the only how we're going to be fruitful. However, we live life and life is life. Life be life. And as they say, and we share many similar experiences when it comes to people, places and things. And a lot of the things that I can, that I've overcome and that I was able to learn through experiences, I can share that with you. And sometimes it's really down to earth, matter of fact revelations that you can apply practically in your life because someone has gone through what you're going through and you don't know how to deal with it. And God is just showing his love in this capacity by using me, using someone else to reveal to you things that you can do. First of all, to let you know that God hears you. He hears your silent cries. He knows what you're dealing with. He knows the people that you're dealing with. He knows the situation that you're in and that you're looking for a way out or that, or that you want life to be better because you believe in your heart that life gets better. God placed that desire in your heart. That's why you yearn for it. That's why you desire it. That's why you're seeking for it. So that being said, unless you're living in a cave, you have to, you, you are around people. I don't care how introvert, introvert you are, how antisocial you are. You know, essentially we, if you know, you, we live in a society, we live in a world where you have to interact with people. Now I believe God created community, right? God is the originator of community. Now, Community God's way is always going to be the best because God is love. He is merciful. He is joy. He is harmony. You know, he just knows how to get you where you need to be and how to make you feel good. Amen. Gushy and good. And so God knows how to do that. He's the only one who knows how to do that perfectly when it comes to every single one of us who are different, have different needs, different in different spaces, spiritually, mentally, and, and economically. There are so many factors that 
influences a person's way of life and how they see things. And God is able to fit the mold for each person if he wants to. However, he uses vessels, he uses people whom, you know, he can use to be fruitful to get to you because, you know, to meet you where you're at, right? So, um, so I wanted, so, so, so it has been a struggle for me to be more honest about, to be more transparent, I should say, about, you know, my life situations and, and just the things that I've dealt with, because I want to be careful that I'm not, when I express myself and when I express truth and the things that I believe and feel, that it's not coming from a place of anger, that it's not coming from a place of hate or resentment, but it's coming from a place of truth so that it can inspire and encourage others to let people know, hey, I see you, right? And that this is what you can do and this is how you can move forward and, and be stronger, if anything. Be stronger because what don't kill you will make you stronger and learn from that experience. So one of the things that I've that that I've had to that I've been focused on or what the Lord has called me to cultivate is the, the concept of identity, your identity as to who God created you to be. Now, culture and society has created, defined you, has made you become someone you are not, has allowed you to see yourself the way the world wants you to see yourself in the in the context of you know, how you show up because of your skin color, because of, you know, your background, your academic background, your economical background. And, you know, you would, if you don't know better as myself, at one point in my life, I was someone who, you know, I had a concept or perspective that when you, if you look like money, people will treat you better and treat you kindly. And that was my experience, right? So what I would do was that I would steal my mom's money literally go and, and buy expensive clothing clothing trendy expensive clothing at the time that was that was trending and, and popular and i noticed how when i would dress nicely i would have nice things how people would treat me differently it didn't matter what how rotten my personality was it didn't matter how selfish i was none of none of that none of that mattered okay all that mattered was how i was how i showed up and how people saw me and i rode with that for a long time, right? Eventually, you know, we, we begin to learn and realize, wow, what, what shall a man profit if he loses, if he gains the world and loses his soul? Essentially, I was losing myself because I was compromising my integrity. I was stealing from my mom. I was just working towards creating an image and a life that was not authentically me just to be accepted, just to be valued and validated. Right. So many of us, if you're watching this, you know, we've done that. Right. And God, glory to God, he's come into our lives. Or should I say he has, you know, finally, we've finally allowed God to break into our lives and to begin to influence us righteously. And part of us being influenced, uh, part of the results of being influenced righteously is having a strong sense of self, a strong personality, making decisions that you believe in your heart is right for you, no longer compromising. You may bend sometimes because, you know, you're still growing in a revelation as to who you are and who, who God has called you to be. But ultimately, you're growing. So the more you grow, the more stronger you become and the more you manifest who God has called you to be. And many of us who were people pleasers, God, you know, in our life, past life, currently, if you're working on it, God has actually made us people to be to have strong personalities. You'll find that everything that the enemy says that you are, you are actually the opposite. So if the world and the enemy was saying that you're weak, you're actually strong. If the world and and, and culture and, and, and society was saying that you're dumb, you're, you're actually smart and intelligent. If the world and, and culture said that you're actually ugly, you're actually beautiful, okay? If the world and culture says that, oh, you don't speak well or you can't speak, you actually Im are imbued with the power and the ability to speak. So this is the revelations and these are the things that you come into when you have the mind of Christ, glory to God, and you have the spirit of truth in you and the teacher Holy Spirit begins to reveal to you who you are truthfully and, you, and now you begin to believe again. Because a lot of us, you know, when we were children, we did have a strong sense of self and we were carefree and, and loved and, and strong-willed and, and didn't really care much about people's opinions. Even, when, even if we were bullied, you know, it hurt. But we still kept pushing. God still kept us pushing. God still kept us pressing forward. Many of us, however, allow just the cares of the world and the, and the, the 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 pressure of the world to change us. And so many of us became people who became uh, conformers to societal expectations. As I said before, when it comes to how you look, you started now to compromise just your sense of self. You began to do whatever you needed to do to get by, which included stealing from family members, um, which included, you know, uh, you know, just doing things that you weren't supposed to do. 
okay and that's all the works of the enemy and you know it is what it is let bygones be bygones god is good he's faithful and merciful and he has made a way for us to be redeemed he has made a way for us to be transformed by the renewing of our minds he has given us a new heart and a new spirit in christ jesus we are born again all things have passed away all things have become new we are new creatures in christ and god wants the best for us and so part of receiving God's best, we have to re be reprogrammed. We have to relearn, unlearn, and relearn the right ways, the expected ways, the standards of God, and sustain that because when we know better, we do better. So I want to encourage you fellas out there, especially because this is something that I've always dealt with, and it's something that I continue to, de to, to deal with now so that I'm not compromising my integrity. I'm not convincing you that I am not, I am not who you say or who you think I am. Um, now that I've come into a place where I'm really bullheaded and obstinate when it comes to, again, me discerning the enemy using people to get me to come out of character, to get me to say or to defend myself when what is needs no explanation. When you are a man of God, again, download the ebook, I King Amongst Kings, a King David Descendant, Affirmations for the King Who's Becoming with Spiritual Insights. When you are a man of God, okay, and you're living for the Lord. There is an expectation when it comes to your, the, the, your standard of living, your purity, um, sexual purity, sexual wholeness, how you, your integrity, your dignity, how you show up in public, how you speak to people, how you operate, how you walk, how you talk. All these different things, I believe, will begin to change and begin to conform to royalty. As a royal priesthood, as joint heirs with Jesus Christ in the kingdom, as men of God, there is a standard that God expects us to abide by and to live by. And he has made it easy for us to, to subscribe to, uh, to this because of the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit in us that, that empowers us, that gives us the ability to embody the identity that God has given us. It don't matter what your current situation is right now. You could be broke, busted, and disgusted. You are going to be who you are even before you get into that position of reigning. King David was anointed before he was positioned as a king. So a lot of us have been anointed. God has called us. We know God. God has made his presence known in our lives. He has given us visions and dreams about his promises for our lives, just like Joseph. But we're not in a position of reigning yet physically. We are not in a physical state or in a physical position where people can see our dominion. But the truth of the matter is we already have it. And so as we're becoming from the inside out, as the kingdom of God is working on the inside of us and we are being transformed by the renewing of our minds, we are going to become. This is why you, you know, you'll notice during your spiritual growth, especially if it's an accelerated spiritual growth, that things cannot stay the same for too long. You're always outgrowing people. You're always outgrowing situations. You're always wanting more. You're elevating and you're going higher and higher and higher and higher. And you just can't be comfortable, complacent, and toxic okay it just doesn't work for you so you're continuously transforming you're continually shedding skin and being stripped and it's like you're like god like i can't seem to find people who are just my tribe people who are just for me and that's be partially because you are on an accelerated path of growth god is doing a work in you god is having you catch up to the things that the enemy still steal stole and this kill stole and destroyed in your life and so you're on a path or an or on an accelerated path where god is you know having you surpass i'm talking about surpass i dreamt this dream some years ago when i first got saved and i was strong in the spirit and you know i was fresh in the spirit and god had given me this dream where it was on this bus okay and i never talked about this dream but i was on this bus and i got on the bus and I got on the bus, and I'm going to tell you exactly what it, what it was. I got on the bus, and it was like a, a coach bus. You know those buses that if you from if you go on like trips and stuff, these big coach buses. So I got on the bus, and as I got on the bus, I was just like on a mission. In the, dream, in the spirit, I felt like I was on a mission. So I got on the bus, and I just went straight to the back of the bus. And as I was going to the back of the bus, spirit had me like look around to see who was on the bus. And all I saw on the bus was a bunch of white women. They, it was all, and this is not no discrimination on, on no biases or anything. This is what I saw in the dream. I was, it was a whole bunch of white women on the bus. And I went straight to the back of the bus and they didn't pay me no mind. They were talking and engaging. You know, you can tell in the dream that they maybe knew each other or whatever. But I was by myself. I felt like I was alone in the dream, but I was on a mission. And I went to the back of the bus, just strong and just not really caring. And I think I had like a bag or a book. And I went in the back of the bus, the bu to the back of the bus, and I sat down. Now the bus begins to drive off, and as I'm looking out the mirror, it was like we were somewhere in the mountains, 
but it was paved road but we were like in 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 the mountains because it was a lot of greenery there was no houses there was no nothing but there were people walking and it was no sidewalks but there were people walking on the side of the road it, it was kind of given like if you grew up in a country if you grew up in the islands there's really no sidewalks unless you're like you know in a touristy area or in a town but if you're driving in the countryside it's just road and then grass on the side of the road there's no sidewalk right but, so in the dream, there was no sidewalk. It was people walking on the side of the road. And I saw, but, it, uh, and so I, even though I was on a bus, so I was on a bus and it was going so fast. It was like zooming through, like so fast, impossible for this realm, but definitely not for the spirit. The bus was zooming by so fast, right? Yet still, and that to me meant acceleration. Yet still, I was able to, because the spirit had me look outside the window to see like what, because again, there was like people walking outside. And I was watching outside and I saw it was one guy, it was one, so I, so I looked outside and I saw that it was just people walking and it was this one person, one individual, it was a, I guess it, it, it's relevant, but it was a white male and his pants, he, he was just like a, like a thug or someone who is who will typically dress as if they weren't from the hood right he was his pa his pants were sagging he had his pants his pants were sagging it was under his butt and he was just like it, it was given like he was part of the trend like the the the, the culture whatever is going on in, in culture as far as the way you dress and as you know in culture right now it, it, sagging your pants it doesn't matter if you're on a runway or whatever everyone has has caught on to the trend of sagging pants so whatever that meant it was like he was just there and and just like not in purpose not just just living not in purpose not in anything productive not in anything constructive just walking aimlessly and this was about four or five this was again in around 2016 and so i say that to say I say that I say this dream to say I still don't really know entirely what that dream meant, but God will give you an, the revelation if you are someone who can interpret dreams. God is going to give you the interpretation, and if you have an interpretation of the dream, please put it in the description box. And if it resonates with me by the Holy Spirit, I will leave it. If it doesn't, I will delete it. But when when I when God delivered me and, and brought me back to life, okay. A lot of the things about myself that I had oppressed and buried because it wasn't appreciated, it was bullied, it was made to seem like weird or, or weak, God brought it back to me, okay? God brought back to me my sense of self, my peculiar nature, the things that made me different, the things that the world, as some people, or, or the world thought to be weak, God brought it back to me, okay? And... Again, because I'm now embodying these these unique attributes that were God given. Again, here comes the bullying. Here comes the, the slick comments. Here comes you know the conversations. Here comes the insinuations. Here comes the thing, these things that before I had a sense of self and 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 before I knew who I was, I would feel hurt. I would feel some type of way. I would feel like condemned. I would feel bad. I would feel like wow, like just broken. Now, it's like it's. It's more annoying because you really see how small-minded and, and, and foolish people are and that you see how the enemy uses broken individuals and weak individuals again to do his dirty work. Work. So if you're not careful, it can be so annoying that you know you end up just really telling somebody about themselves. But you realize because of, of, of God and just his, his, his spirit of intelligence and emotional control and again, just the authority that God has given us over the enemy, that these things are not going to work. So the things that people used to say to offend you, to get you out of character, to hurt your feelings, especially with men, right? If you're a man and you and you know you will know what I'm talking about. You may have grown up in certain cultures and certain societies where they have a perception of what a man is or what masculinity is, and you may have qualities about you that are quote unquote soft. Yes, still you are you are from the tribe of Judah. You are a force not to be reckoned with. You are someone if people were to really try you and pull up you about the business. But yet still you don't wear your hardness or you don't wear your strength or your masculinity on your sleeve or on your shoulders like most men do, which 
culturally, you know, it seems as strong, but in truth, it's it's it tends to be weak because what is needs no explanation. If you're really about that life, a true G don't have to talk about nothing, okay? They can be as soft as they want to be. They can be as chill as they want to be. But when push comes to shove and when it's time to really pr protect their kingdom, protect their family, protect themselves, protect their children, protect whatever it is that they love, it's 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 it, 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 it it's standing on on as they say standing on all ten toes standing on business you understand me so the enemy for a long time had used had tried to test our gangster in a way that was perverted in a way excuse me test our gangster in a way that when we responded we were responding in or out of insecurity or out of fear okay or or trying to please or uh, prove to people that we are something that we that we are what we are something that they think we are not am i saying that right we try to respond to people to convince them that we are not what they think we are if that makes sense and so i've learned by the grace and to god be the glory of the importance of letting god fight your battles let me tell you something as a king and as ro royalty, there are certain things kings don't do. There are certain things royalty don't do. Okay, um, so this is this is part of the training for reigning, which we all have to go through. I believe as people of God, before we're in a position of influence where the world can see us. Okay, God wants to make sure that we are ready and prepared for the rulership that's about to come. Because as we know, you know, the, the you know, with the Hebrew boys and and with many people even now who have reached a level of, of success, but they were weak in the areas of sexual of sexuality or, or sex. Weak in the areas of money, right? And so they allow perversion and corruption to have them make poor decisions that eventually expose them and they've lost an entire empire, okay? God don't want that for us. God wants us, you know, when he builds us up that we are, you know, that when he builds us up, we are, um, <clears throat> that we are solidified that the house that he builds for us or builds us on or, or with that it is a house that cannot be broken or, or, or broken down or destroyed by the winds or the cares of this world. Any storm that comes our way, we will be left standing because our house is built on the foundations and on the principles of the Lord thy God, who is our cornerstone. So, beautiful people, enjoy the time where you are where you are. Enjoy the low levelness. If you're in a situation now where you're in a, in a, in a low level or in a space where it's just like, God, I don't want to be here. God works out all things for the good of those who love God. So God is going to use that situation to develop your character, to increase your confidence, to give you a perspective about human beings and humanity, to let you know it's no different down here than it is up here. The moment you give someone a reason to be threatened by your ability, by your intellect, by your swag, by your anointing, is the moment they're going to take and allow the enemy to come against you and to say something to you to get you out of character and to get you to do something that you will regret. God is going to work with you until you get that thing, that, that, that out of you, that seed out of you. And you're going to be so excellent in everything that you do when it comes to emotional intelligence, when it comes to the way that you speak and communicate, when it comes to the, to, to what you do and how you do it, you're going to do it like no other. And you're just going to continue to rise and, and elevate and be the king that you were created to be. So stay strong, download my ebook support subscribe share and uh, stay connected because we are on this journey to transformation we are becoming the kings that god created us to be and no weapon formed against us shall prosper we will embody the grace that god has given us and we will do all that god said we are to do and even more that they whoever thought that you wasn't going to be nothing whoever thought and spoke over you and lied about you they're going to be the people at the table that god has prepared to show that you were always his chosen one that you were always his is anointed that you are the one that that he prepared and preserved for a time such as this to even save and help them just as king uh king david did to his enemies and just like king uh joseph did to his family the same people who tried to break you are the same people that god is going to use for the most part it's select few not everyone that he's going to use to have you save them and help them amen nonetheless keep pushing keep pressing god is with you and he will never leave you nor forsake you talk to you guys later